Hi, I'm Adam Kolb, and you're at BeachCast. So, the battle of tabs versus spaces rages on. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, I've been a programmer and web developer for going on 20 years. And I may not be professional. And you might not be either. Being a professional should have real meaning. And when others consider you to be a professional, it should allow them to expect certain levels of quality and craftsmanship. In this video, let's explore what it means to be professional. So stick around and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. So what does it mean to be professional? In most professions, we've come to expect a professional to display certain qualities. They're expected to be able to explain pitfalls, mitigation, and final outcomes. We expect them to know everything in order to solve our problems. When was the last time a doctor asked a patient to hold on while they go Google something while the patient's bleeding internally? Or what if a plumber walked away to find the perfect fitting while your kitchen was being sprayed down by a huge leak? Or what if a dentist simply shrugged their shoulders as you're wincing in pain because they couldn't figure out what caused it? Yeah, professionals are expected to know things. Now, I'm not saying each of these professionals know everything. And I certainly don't believe that programmers should also know everything. Instead, what I'm saying is how we react, the answers we give is everything when it comes to the customer's perception. Professionals stop the bleeding, plug up the leaks, and numb the abscessed tooth as they figure out how to properly treat these things. Meanwhile, customers are not forced to blindly roam the hallways in frustration to check on things, deal with irritated customers, and cover their butts in board meetings. Let's take a look at how we, programmers, can do a better job at being professional. I'd like to take a moment to introduce the sponsor for this video, Cloudways. Cloudways allows you to focus on your business and avoid web hosting hassles. Go live in minutes by selecting your application, selecting the vendor your server should be housed with, then select the server size for your chosen provider, and you're ready. Please use the affiliate link in the description below to support the BeachCast channel and to claim your one month of free hosting. One of the first things that I've observed with professionals or people that I respect in the field is that they take ownership. They don't make excuses. They certainly might give ideas of why things may have happened. However, they take ownership of their code. After all, it was them who wrote it, or in your case, it was you who wrote it. The customers, while they certainly can and give input and certainly create deadlines that they like to have things done by, we're still the ones creating the code. It's our responsibility to make sure that we're creating good code and we're solving problems in the best way possible. Taking ownership is very important in others' perceptions of whether you're a professional or not. When it comes to being a programmer, one of the things that we all are expected to do is test. Oftentimes, developers do this by clicking a button, and if the expected output happens, then they're happy with it, and they move on. However, testing is a lot more than that, and testing should be considered part of development. If you're doing some programming and you're adding a new feature to an application, that application is not finished and ready to go to acceptance testing or, or put in front of customers until it has been thoroughly tested. Testing should be part of your development cycle. You're not done programming until the tests are, are done, until there's tests written, whether it's a unit tests, whether it's integration tests, acceptance tests, make sure you do some regression testing uh, to, to make sure that things that you added today didn't break something from yesterday. All these things are vital. They have to be there. When a professional mechanic repairs a car, they drive the car afterwards to make sure that the repair was in fact working correctly. Or if it's electronic or something along that lines, they will hook it up to the computer that will do tests to make sure that the repair was applied successfully. We as programmers should be doing exactly the same thing to our applications and our code that we write on an ongoing basis. Another important aspect of all professionals is learning to say no. Now, I'm not saying learn to say the word no, because that's very easy. It's a two-letter word. No, I can say no all I want. But 
Learning to say no in programming is much bigger than that. It's not just a simple matter of hearing of a problem and, and knowing that there are some solutions that don't work and then pushing back and saying no. It's much deeper than that. Learning to say no means that you gather all the facts, you gather all the requirements that your customer or coworkers are requesting, you put it all together as, as well as you can, you formulate a solution, if there is a solution, and then if it's beyond the scope of maybe you don't have time, maybe the resources would be too much for, for this to be taken on. You know, after you have all the numbers, then you go back and give an educated professional no, and here is why. You don't just simply say no. You provide the reasoning behind it. Provide the data. I'm a huge fan of data. Data is infinitely important in, in our day-to-day -day jobs as programmers. By providing this data, we give our customers or people that are using our systems the reasoning behind it so that they can better gauge maybe, I, maybe they need to change their expectation. Maybe they need to add more resources, whether it's human resources or whether it's other, other things like servers or networking, whatever the case might be. But we as professionals have to arm them in a way that they can recover you know, any possible business losses or, or maybe even deal with their customers a little bit better. An important thing to realize as a professional programmer is that nobody writes perfect code the first time. It doesn't happen. Professional developers write the code, then they refactor iteratively to improve the code to get it to a point where it is ready for consumption. And much like testing that I was just talking about previously, refactoring is part of development. It is It, it should be built right in. Once you've finished writing the code, there is a certain amount of iterations of refactoring that have to happen in order to clean up the design of the code, clean up the code itself, make sure that best uh, practices were followed, make sure coding standards were followed. All of these things have to be worked in, and that is part of development. By the same token, code changes over time. As we're adding these new features, as we're doing these things, refactoring should be worked into our time estimates because any code that we're going to be touching, even if it was code that was written prior to us adding a new feature or, or fixing a bug, there's going to be more refactors that have to happen in that old code as well to maintain the design and make sure that things are up, up to snuff today because practices may have changed since the code was originally written. So refactoring is, should be part of our time estimates. It should be part of the development cycle that we're working on. We also should be using source control. Whether you're using Git or whether you're using another solution, you should always use source control. Always commit on a regular basis. You know, even in nice small commits, get everything into your source control. So that way, if you need to roll back, you can. You have that availability. You can always go back and, and restore from a previous state. In the same vein as source control, another tool is your editor. Many of us use many different editors. There are popular ones out there. There are some people who still use VI or Emacs, things like that. Uh, they might be using an IntelliJ IDE. They might be using VS Code. There are others. I'm not going to go down a list because I can't, I can't possibly remember them all. But there are a lot of editors. A professional knows their tools and your editor is just a tool. If you're a mechanic, it's a wrench. If you're a plumber, maybe it's maybe it's also a wrench. Uh, but that being said, as developers, you know, our editor of choice, our IDEs or our text editor or our console application, those are our tools. You should know them really well. You should know one, I, one IDE or one editor, learn it inside and out, know all the pieces, know the keyboard shortcuts. If you don't know the sh keyboard shortcuts, you're taking way longer to do things. Please learn the p keyboard shortcuts for your given editor and, and get really good at it. It is the tool of your trade. It's what you're using hour after hour, day after day. You should really learn it so that way you're able to perform at peak performance. Now, while I typically don't evangelize about certain editors, I will say that if you're programming on a day-to-day -day basis, I would encourage you to embrace an IDE that also has step debugging. 
it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of troubleshooting. So if you're if you're just using a plain text editor with a little bit of syntax highlighting, possibly, I would encourage you to look into something a little bit more robust. It will save you time in the long run. And modern IDEs have come a long way. Their, their performance is pretty good. The speeds are pretty decent. So I'd encourage you to learn one of those really well. Leave a comment down below and tell me the editor that you, that you use and how well do you know it? And also if you're going to commit to learning it better. Another key trait of professionals is they're kind of choosy about the companies or the customers that they work for. If you're in an interview at a company and you feel really iffy about that company, ask questions. Interview the company. Often when I interview for a new position or take on a new customer, I often interview them as well as them interviewing me. Ask questions that are meaningful and things that are important to you. If at the end of the process, if you feel iffy about that company, don't take that job. Wait for the next company. Now, I realize you might be in a difficult situation to the point where you need a job. We need to eat. But by the same token, uh, at least in, in programming, there are more companies hiring. I would encourage you not to accept that bad job. If you feel iffy, don't do it. Avoid it unless you absolutely have to take it. Now, this next one's possibly a little bit controversial. I'm a firm believer in commenting your code. Don't write comments to explain the code. Programmers coming behind you, they are programmers. They can read the code for themselves and understand what it's doing. Instead, what I try to do in comments is a couple different things. One is include things in there that maybe the IDE that, or the editor that you're using also are able to use. And it will make everybody's job easier later, you know, when the IDE is able to give good feedback. Another thing is, rather than explaining the code, explain the intent of the code. So if you're explaining the intent, you're not explaining the code. Somebody can read the code and understand what it's doing. You know, but the, when you explain the intention of the code, it might highlight a bug. It might highlight to somebody, hey, this code's no longer doing what the intention was for it to do. Now, maybe the design changed. That's perfectly fine. That means the code needs to be updated. But you also find that by explaining the intent of the code, Chances are the comments don't need to be updated all that often. If you're explaining the code, your comments will have to change all the time. But if you're explaining the intent of the code, the intent of the code typically doesn't change by much, even if the coding itself does change. So please comment your code. That way the next person following behind you has a little bit easier job. And that person may be you. Because how often have we all gone into code that we wrote a year before and we're like, oh my goodness, it's a good thing I left that comment in there for myself because I forgot about it. Along those same lines of commenting your code is I would encourage you to also work yourself out of a job. Make sure you're doing proper documentation, whether it's commenting in your code or creating documentation for the project. Uh, train your replacement. Other developers are working with you. Train them along the way. Implement peer code reviews where you're looking at each other's code and giving feedback and learning from their feedback as well. But constantly be working yourself out of a job. Now, that sounds counterintuitive. A lot of people get very defensive about their job. However, let me share some alternative viewpoints. If you've worked yourself out of a job or ensured that documentation was good, ensured that other people were able to follow behind you when needed, it means that if you want to go on vacation, you can go on vacation. You don't have to worry about calls while you're on vacation because something in your code broke and nobody knows how to do it. Another thing is that it makes it much easier for you to be promoted. If they need you in the code because you're the only person that understands that code or, and can work with the application, it's not easy to promote you. They can't make you a manager. They can't make you anything. You have to stay there and on the job and do those things. Those are some key reasons why it's important to make yourself replaceable. And the last thing I would like to share about being professional is something you hear me say on every single video or every single podcast that I that I create. And that is be good to yourself and others.
professionals are good to other people. They're good to themselves. They take care of things in a proper manner. And it's really important to do that by taking care of others and also being good to yourself. You ensure that you're not going to burn out. You ensure that other people are going to want to work with you and help on projects. And it just trickles down from there where everybody's just a lot happier when there's less politics and when everybody is getting along. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found some things in here that can help you become a better developer. If you're doing many of these, congratulations. You're doing what should be done to be a professional programmer, a professional developer. I wish you the best of luck and hope you're doing well. If you found anything that I said in this video helpful, please pass it along to other people. Let other folks know about the video and, and refer them to it. Maybe consider clicking the like button down below. That way YouTube will also refer the video to more folks. I really appreciate your help with that. Now YouTube is going to put some other videos around me here that you, might be good for you to watch next. I'd encourage you to check those out. And uh, again, be good to yourself and others, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.